Today I wanted to make a video regarding a situation that happened a few days ago. There was a big announcement regarding two stocks that I know are pretty popular with the people who watch my channel and one of which I'm currently a shareholder of. On February 27th, Ready Capital, which is a mortgage REIT that trades under the ticker RC, released their fourth quarter results and announced a dividend distribution of 40 cents per share, which is in line with their last quarters. But that wasn't the big ticket news item for that day. In addition, the company also announced that they came to an agreement to acquire another company, which is Broadmark Realty, another M REIT, ticker BRMK. It was news that nobody saw coming, and it resulted in RC stock falling by over 13% and Broadmark stock surging by over 20%. So today I want to discuss this merger and what the implications are going to be for both of these companies. According to the press release on their website, it says this merger is going to result in Ready Capital becoming the fourth largest commercial mortgage REIT with a capital base of $2.8 billion. Under the terms of the merger agreement, each share of Broadmark Realty's common stock is going to be converted into 0.47233 shares of Ready Capital common stock, or a total of approximately 63 million shares of Ready Capital common stock. The respective closing stock prices for Ready Capital and Broadmark on February 24, 2023 imply an offering price of $5.90 per Broadmark share, representing a 41% premium or approximately 0.85 tangible book value as of December 31, 2022. Upon the closing of the merger, Ready Capital stockholders are expected to own approximately 64% of the combined company stock, while Broadmark stockholders are expected to own approximately 36% of the combined company stock. In addition, Ready Capital will assume Broadmark's outstanding senior unsecured notes. The merger was approved by the boards of both companies, and it's still pending the approval of the shareholders. So if it is approved, which I expect it to, then Broadmark is basically going to cease to exist, and all their shares are going to be converted into RC stock instead. I've covered Ready Capital in two previous videos before, but I've never talked about Broadmark other than briefly in my monthly dividend stock compilation videos. It was probably one of my most requested stocks to look at, but I never got around to covering it. It does pay monthly dividends, which is probably one of the biggest reasons why it was so requested, but there was a period of time where I felt like I was just talking way too much about mortgage REITs, and so I was putting it off for the time being. But according to Broadmark's website, they're a specialty real estate finance company that invests in opportunities throughout the small to medium-sized market, generally around $5 million to $75 million. They also say they provide smart, reliable, rapid financing solutions across the entire debt capital stack, including senior fixed, floating rate, and bridge structures, as well as mezzanine and participating loans. Probably the biggest reason why I didn't get around to covering this stock sooner was because, in my opinion, Broadmark is a terribly run company. You can see in less than four years, their stock has lost over half of its value. It actually was a lot worse until this surge created by the merger announcement, but their dividend payout has also been cut in half since their IPO. I really wanted to do like a case study on this company because the board, in my opinion, was way more interested in trying to manage their stock than their actual company. For the longest time, this company's dividend payout was unsustainable, so what the board decided to do was instead of cutting it, they burned through all the cash they had in order to maintain it. According to their balance sheet, in June of 2020, they had $218 billion in cash and equivalents, but in December of 2022, they were all the way down to just $55 billion. That's a drop of nearly 75% of cash and equivalents in just two and a half years. Their trending earnings per share was also a huge red flag as we look at the entirety of their history. In only one quarter since their IPO did they ever meet or exceed their revenue expectations. Additionally, 100% of their portfolio as of last quarter was made up of fixed rate loans. That means as interest rates rise, Broadmark wasn't going to benefit at all from collecting higher revenue, unlike other M rates that do hold floating rate loans like Aries Commercial Real Estate. Not to mention, most business development companies overwhelmingly hold floating rate loans, and as we've seen over the last year, these companies have been increasing their dividend payouts a lot. But looking at Broadmark's dividend history, we can see a lot of sizable cuts in such a short amount of time. This is shockingly bad performance, especially for this kind of mortgage REIT. I mentioned before that based upon my observation, the worst performing REITs out there invest in already existing residential mortgage-backed securities. The better performers like Aries Commercial, Blackstone Mortgage, and Arbor Realty issue their own commercial loans. This is exactly what Broadmark does, and they've been shockingly bad at managing their own investments. It was for this reason, even though it's a high-yielding monthly dividend stock, that I decided to steer clear from this company. Ready Capital, on the other hand, is a company that I have liked more. It's still one of my smallest investments because there's really only a small handful of REITs that I do like. One thing that's made Ready Capital different is that they have been dedicated to growing their company over the years by acquiring other real estate companies. This is something that's fared well for another REIT that I like, which is Rhythm Capital. You can see over the years they've been scooping up other real estate companies which have helped diversify their holdings. But Ready Capital hasn't been the best performing REIT and they've also had to cut their dividend a couple times throughout their history. They started paying a regular quarterly dividend of 50 cents per share back in 2013 and it has changed a number of times going up and down as high as 55 cents per share and as low as 25 cents per share very briefly during the pandemic. 
After the pandemic, they did grow it back up to 42 cents per share, but in their last reported quarter, it's now at 40 cents per share. They've also had a consistent book value since their IPO. It has gone up some years and back down in others, but today it's higher than it was back when they were founded. So ultimately, what's going to be the result from this merger for both companies? Like I said in the press release, Broadmark stock is basically going to cease to exist, and if you happen to own shares of them, you're going to be receiving ready capital stock instead. For every one share of BRMK that you own, you'll now own 0.47233 shares of RC, assuming shareholders are going to approve of this transaction. This is news that a lot of Broadmark shareholders are upset about, especially those who bought in early into this company and were hoping for a recovery. But because Broadmark was trading at around $4.5 per share before the announcement, this is what caused their stock share price to soar so much. The reason why Ready Capital stock share price fell so much was largely because the merger is going to result in more shares of RC being generated from Broadmark stock being converted. When new shares are issued of a company, it's always going to result in a stock share price falling because RC shareholders are going to be diluted. Ready Capital, in my opinion, really did get a good deal on this company. It's still unbelievable to me that Broadmark sold for so little given the fact that they were worth so much more just two and a half years ago. But even though Ready Capital did get their assets at a good deal and this is going to be mostly bad news for Broadmark shareholders, I do have mixed feelings about Ready Capital actually merging with Broadmark. Obviously, their company's past performance has been really concerning, but ultimately, Ready Capital's proven to have a significantly better management team than Broadmark, which I think was their number one biggest issue. They do have over $1.4 billion in current outstanding loans, so it is a pretty sizable portfolio. Plus, 99.3 of them are secured loans, which does make them safer investments. I have no doubt that Ready Capital probably saved Broadmark from eventually going under. The way I see it, they're going to be like a recovery team going in and cleaning up after a disaster. But this is exactly what Ready Capital's done in the past, particularly with Anworth Mortgage. In 2020, they were able to acquire this company at a steep discount, which was already in a lot of trouble at the time. So Ready has a long history of swooping in on distressed companies and picking them up at huge discounts. It's a risky investment on RC's part, but I am trusting that they know what they're doing, and I think it's going to benefit them in the long term. Plus, considering this stock is such a small part of my overall portfolio, I'm basically just going to ride things out and see what happens for them. With that being said, thank you all so much for watching today's video. Please feel free to hit the thumbs up button if you liked what you saw, and feel free to subscribe if you want to see more high-yielding investing strategy videos. Again, thank you all so much for watching, and until next time, take care.